I want to talk to you about the subject of missing people in the Bible. The Bible's missing person list. I looked it up and this unbelievable number of 600,000. They say 600,000 people go missing each year. That's a whole lot of people. And in the Bible, you have some people that go missing. Quite a few missing people in the Bible. And I'm just going to go through and talk about each one that I could think of. These probably aren't all of them. Just ones that I thought of off the top of my head and wrote them down. The first one is Enoch. There's a very mysterious character in the Bible. And this man is Enoch. This man lived before Noah's flood. So he walked this earth for a very long time. You know, even though he ended up missing early on in his life, he still walked this earth longer than uh, David, Abraham, and Paul put together. He had a really long life before he went missing. And he's over here in Genesis chapter 5 and verse 21. It says, And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begat Methuselah. I mean, before he had this guy, Methuselah, he lived a pretty good long life. I mean, if you live 65 years, you know, that's not as long as you'd like to live, but that's still a pretty good long full life right there, 65 years, and he's having a son at that age. You know, it sounds like an old age to have a kid, right? Well, not when you consider the fact that Adam had his son Seth when he was 130 years old. Now, Genesis 5.22 says, And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. So, another 300 years go by after he has Methuselah. So, that's 365 years. But Methuselah is going to lose his father, Enoch, at this time. But he did get to spend 300 years with him before he goes on the missing persons list, the Bible's missing persons list. Enoch would have had the opportunity of meeting many people before he was taken. You know, he had the opportunity to uh, make his print on this world, make a difference in this world before he went. I mean, he had 365 years to do it. And obviously he did it because he walked with God. Now you don't know what's gonna you don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. The rapture could happen tomorrow. The Bible says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Are you leaving your print on this world before you leave it? Enoch walked with God. Are the prints you're leaving on this world side by side next to God, like you're walking with God, like Enoch was? He left a mark. Enoch would have had the opportunity to meet many people. He lived during the same time that even Adam was still alive. Adam had only been dead about 50-some years before Enoch went missing. You know, the disappearance of Enoch would have been a really big deal. You know, this guy, 365 years old, father of Methuselah, who Methuselah is a famous character in the Bible, lived longer than anybody, 969 years. His name means when he's dead, it shall be sent, talking about the flood, because Enoch was a prophet. A prophet in the Bible many times named their children after a prophecy. So Enoch would have been prophesying of the flood just like Noah. The disappearance of Enoch would have been a really big deal. It says in Genesis 5, 23 through 24, And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. So Enoch lives 365 years and then vanishes. He's just vanished. And it just doesn't give that much information about it. I would love to have been there and, and seen the scene. 
seen the build up to it, seen the aftermath of it. I imagine though, I imagine Enoch. This is just what I imagine. It's okay to imagine and speculate on things. I mean, you speculate on everything else, but I imagine Enoch walking out in the field someplace and then in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, he was gone. The Lord just took him. In the millennium, it talks about how the child shall die an hundred years. In Isaiah 65, 20, it talks about that. So a hundred years old during the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ will be considered a child. If you died a hundred years old, they're going to be like, wow, this child had so much more time to live. You might imagine the people talking about Enoch when he vanished, saying he had so many years ahead of him, even though he was just three, he was already 365. And if God would have left him, most likely he would have spent another 500 to 600 years on earth. I mean, his son lived to be 969, so maybe he had good genes there. And Methuselah, uh, if, if he lived as long as Methuselah, you know, he'd have been up in the 900s. But I'm sure Enoch was glad that the Lord didn't leave him. I'm sure he's glad that the Lord didn't leave him to see the sons of God mixed with the daughters of men. That happens in Genesis 6 where they corrupt the earth and fill it with violence and the giants and uh, everything else. But, but you know, he, he might have seen a little bit of that before he went. I'm not, you know, you can't really be exactly sure when all that even started. There's a good chance it had already started when Enoch was here, so... I feel like Enoch would have been glad to have left this world that was already getting corrupt with violence. And, But just like that, Enoch had went missing. It doesn't say if anyone was around. It doesn't say, you know, he, he's by himself or a crowd of people saw it or he was walking with Methuselah and Methuselah uh, seen a, a cloud receive him out of his sight and it doesn't say that, you know, he went up and uh, uh, Methuselah saw chariots of fire and horses of fire and a whirlwind from heaven take him up. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say if his kids knew. It doesn't say if his wife knew or if he had been warned ahead of time. It just says he was not for God took him. And we know that he didn't die. He still not died because it says in Hebrews he was translated that he should not see death. If he had stayed around on this earth, he would have died just like everybody else in Genesis 5. Everybody else in Genesis 5 that lived to be 969 like Methuselah, they're dead. But not Enoch. It says in Hebrews 11:5, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Now look at this phrase. And was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. It really jumps out to me how it says, and was not. You know, and was not found. You see that? And was not found. Did Methuselah go looking for him? Obviously, somebody went looking for him because he was not found. Did his wife put up missing posters? Did they have an enormous search party? Was he put on a missing persons list? Enoch simply vanished. Maybe without a trace. I'm not sure if his clothes were left behind or his belongings, but Enoch was gone. And I kind of wonder if they were speculating about what actually happened to Enoch. Was he eaten by one of those giants? Was he kidnapped? Was he killed by some people that hated his preaching? Because, you know, Enoch is noted for his very, very negative preaching in the Bible. In the book of Jude... Uh, verses 14 and 15, it says, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Something that people hate is that type of negative talk. Maybe they thought, well, one of... One of the people that hate his preaching came and killed him, buried him somewhere. Who knows what happened? You know, something that really sticks out, though, is that Enoch was walking with God when God took him. And you know how they try to figure out who the missing per, who the last person, a missing person talked to? They always go back and say, well, this is the last person 
that this guy talked to before he went missing. And the last person that Enoch was talking to most likely was God. And that's who took him. So Enoch, one of the missing people in the Bible, most likely he's in the third heaven right now with the Lord. One of the exceptions to the rule in the Old Testament. One of the only saints that went to the third heaven to be with the Lord in the Old Testament. And then you got Moses. The next missing person is Moses. Moses died before getting to see the promised land, as you know. And something strange about him is mentioned in Deuteronomy 34. In Deuteronomy 34, 5 through 7, it says, So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of his sepulcher unto this day. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. <coughs> so the Lord himself buried Moses, and nobody knew where he was buried. So this is a missing dead body right here. Moses is a missing dead body in the Bible. Something else strange is that when he died, even though he was 120 years old, his eye wasn't dim and his natural force wasn't abated. And this is strange because, you know, by this time, by the time Moses shows up, people aren't living to be 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 900 years old anymore. They're living to be about 120 or less. And they are considered old at that time. But his eyes not dim. His natural force is not abated. He was getting around in that old body like a young man. So the Lord had a future purpose for this body. I believe that's why it was missing. And if you've read the New Testament, you know that he actually shows up again in the New Testament on the Mount of Transfiguration where he talks to the Lord Jesus Christ. Then, most likely, he's one of those two witnesses in Revelation chapter 11 that get beheaded. So Moses is a one of those unique characters in the Bible that dies two times. He's going to come back in the tribulation and get beheaded by the Antichrist and then come back to life again. But, you know, Moses' body, nobody knew where it was. And this was making a very angry devil at that time when he found out that Moses' body was missing. This is a strange story, but Moses' missing body was such a big mystery that two of the biggest superpowers that God ever created were arguing about it. Imagine that. The, outside of God, most likely the two most powerful beings in existence were talking about Moses' missing body. In Jude, in verse 9, it says, Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. You know, when he was contending with the devil, they were disputing about the body of Moses. Michael the archangel didn't give him a regular accusation. He just said, the Lord rebuked thee. But the devil, he was upset about Moses' missing body. Can you imagine the devil coming up to Michael the archangel and trying to pick a fight over Moses' body? Think about that for a minute. Do you know what this means? This means that you and this frail body of yours and your life that you see as insignificant could cause a lot of trouble for the devil to the point that your missing body bothers him. Why did Moses' body mean so much to the devil? Well, because the devil had the power of death, and I guess he felt like they went over his head and took Moses' body and was going to bring him back to life and use it in the future, which they do. And you know, the devil could have taken you to the missing body of any serial killer victim anywhere but he couldn't take you to the missing body of Moses. 
So it's a strange story. I believe that his body went missing because there was a purpose for his body later. I believe Enoch went missing so that he could be a, a picture, a, a foreshadowing of people that are alive at the rapture and go up without dying. So Enoch would picture those people at the rapture who are alive and go up without dying. Now the next one that goes missing is Elijah. Elijah is another one of those mo more interesting characters in the Bible. He doesn't have a book of the Bible with his name on it. He didn't write a book of the Bible, but he's one of the most well-known prophets in the Bible. Elijah going missing is a big deal. You know, like, like Enoch, he went missing before death, and to this day, he hasn't died yet. So he's somewhere right now that's keeping him alive. In 2 Kings 2, 9 through 12, it says, And it came to pass when they were gone over, this is Elijah and Elijah, it says that Elijah said unto Elijah, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. So we know that Elijah knew that he was about to be taken away. He knew that the Lord was coming to get him. And Elijah said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elijah saw it. And he cried and said, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. He saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. So Elijah witnessed his mentor, Elijah, get caught up by a whirlwind into heaven. Imagine the scene. They're walking along. They had just parted the water and walked over it on dry ground, just like Moses did. Just like uh, Joshua went through the Jordan, you know. The Lord performing miracles through these men, the Old Testament. And he's seen Elijah do some amazing stuff, but what he saw here he would never forget. They're walking along. A whirlwind comes down. He sees the chariots of fire. He sees the horses of fire. And just like that, his mentor is gone. He saw him no more. And it's amazing. Elijah has the ability to see it. As you'll see in 2 Kings six seventeen, Elijah's servant's eyes had to be opened before, before he could see the chariots of fire and the horses of fire round about him. But just like that, Elijah, Elijah's best friend and mentor, had left the planet. He was caught up by a whirlwind into heaven. And about, this is the crazy thing, about 50 strong men went looking for Elijah all over the place. Even though Elijah told him, he's like, there's no need. He's, he's gone. He's not here anymore. But in 2 Kings 2, 15 through 17, it says, And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elijah. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. And they said unto him, Behold now, there be with thy servants fifty strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master. Lest peradventure the spirit of the Lord hath taken him up and cast him up on, on some mountain or into some valley. And he said, Ye shall not send. And when they urged him till he was ashamed, he said, Send. They sent therefore fifty men, and they sought three days, but found him not. So Elijah was missing. These guys send out a big search party. They search for three days, but he's not found. Nobody could find him. Gone, vanished, without a trace. So they combed the mountains and valleys with a search party, probably like they did with Enoch, but no luck. The case went cold. So Elijah, like Moses, shows up at the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus Christ as one of the two witnesses in Revelation 11. So Elijah 
He goes missing for a purpose. The Lord's going to use him later. And he's going to picture those who get raptured in the tribulation without dying and then come back down in the millennium but die of old age in the millennium. Because see, Elijah, he's raptured up without dying, but he comes down in the tribulation and dies. So he gets resurrected and doesn't die, but then comes back and dies. Just like those in the tribulation who get raptured out before death and then they come back in the millennium and die of old age. That's who he pictures. Moses pictures those who die in the tribulation, get resurrected, and then come back in the millennium and die again. Enoch pictures those who get raptured out without ever dying and then never die again because they've got a glorified body. But then you got Jonah. You have probably heard the story of Jonah and the whale. Jonah, a worshiper of the God of heaven, a prophet, was told by the Lord to go and preach to Nineveh, a wicked Gentile city, and God writes his sermon outline for him and you know, just says, go preach it. Pretty simple. And it says, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. That's the message. That was it. Uh, all, all Jonah had to do is go preach that. But Jonah refuses because he doesn't want Nineveh to get right with God. And he takes a ship to Tarshish. And while he's down in the bottom of the ship asleep, a big storm comes. And all the mariners on the ship are freaking out. They don't know what to do. They hear the thunder they hear the lightning. The ship is rocking and reeling. So you know what they do? They call upon their gods. But false gods can't save anybody. The storm continues. It's the perfect storm. And just imagine it. These guys out on that ship, those waves coming way up over the, over the ship, and they, they go to the bottom of it, and Jonah explains how, he explains to them how he serves the God of heaven, and the storm is happening because he refused to go to preach to Nineveh. And they're like, man, what were you thinking? You've caused this storm to come up on us. Now what do we do? And eventually, when they can't think of anything else that's, that's going to work, as a last resort, Jonah is thrown overboard. And a great fish, which Jesus himself identifies as a whale, and this is a fish that the Lord's prepared. And it came and swallowed up Jonah. And I don't know if the mariners planned on keeping this a big secret. I don't know if Jonah had anybody waiting back home for him. I don't know if anyone would have even been looking for Jonah. But we know that for three days and three nights, Jonah was missing in the belly of the whale. And while in the whale's belly... Jonah cries out to God, and God hears him and causes the well to vomit Jonah out on the dry land. And so he goes and preaches to Nineveh. And I don't think anyone in Nineveh would have been looking for Jonah. You know, I don't think he was gone enough to be on a missing persons list, but Jonah most likely showed up looking like somebody who had been missing for a very long time, covered in well slobber, clothes probably ripped up, dirty and sweaty, from the long journey that he just took. But Jonah goes to preach to Nineveh. They get right. God spares the city. But notice the long suffering and patience and mercy of God through the entire story. In Jonah's most terrifying time in the well's belly, God was with him and he heard him. That is how it would be for you. Nobody knew where Jonah was, but the Lord knew where Jonah was. Nobody could hear Jonah. You know, how could somebody hear you? You're in the water at the bottom, down at the bottoms of the mountains. And God can hear you. God can hear every missing person. Can you imagine all the missing people right now? If 600,000 went missing and they cried out to God for the first time, God heard that, heard all of that. But the next missing person is Jesus Christ himself. Did you know that when Jesus Christ came down to this earth in the flesh as a little boy, he went missing for a time. In Luke 2, 41 through 44, it says, Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. So they gone to Jerusalem to the feast of the Passover 
when Jesus Christ was 12 years old, and when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. So just like with any missing person, you go, you seek out relatives and acquaintances and ask if they've seen him. You know, do you know where he went? How, when's the last time that you saw him? But it says in verse 45, and when they found him not. Can you imagine the terror of losing the, a child? You know, there's been times where I thought that I lost my child in the store and I'm freaking out. But can you imagine the terror that they had? They found him not. They turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. You know, Mary knew that Jesus Christ was virgin born, obviously. She knew he is the Son of God, God in the flesh. Did she have a full understanding of it? The way we do since we have a complete Bible? Probably not, but she knew that this son of hers was from the Lord. And at the same time, Jesus Christ was still her son according to the flesh. So she's got feelings for him just like you have for your kid. So her and Joseph, her husband, are freaking out, most likely, wanting to find their son. It says in verse 46, And it came to pass that after three days... That three days keeps coming up. Did you notice that? They went looking for Elijah for three days. Jonah was in the belly of the well for three days and three nights. And in here they find Jesus after three days. They found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. You know, there was no social media then. You know, those doctors didn't have Facebook where they put up little quotes and teachings every day. So they couldn't have said, yeah, Jesus is over here. He's, he's teaching us stuff. They couldn't tell him tell him that. So they, they just had to find him there. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And that's Mary calling Joseph Jesus his father and he's the fa he's his father in the sense that you know he's the one that's Mary's husband helping take care of him but he's not his father in the sense that like that's where he came from he he is the son of god it says and he said unto them how is it that ye sought me wished ye not that i must be about my father's business he's like you should have known that i'm Serving my father, my father's business. You see that? She said, Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he says, Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business. Kind of correcting her there. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them, but his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. So Jesus Christ, just going about his father's business, he was missing for three days, about three days. And there was a reason why Jesus Christ was missing. He had a good reason to be missing. Sometimes people are absent or are missing in your life for a good reason. And if it's a good reason, then don't give them a hard time about it. The next missing person is Philip. And this is a great interesting story in the book of Acts chapter 8, most people overlook Philip going missing in the story. But it says in Acts 8, 26 through 39, it says, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go to the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. So Philip's sitting there, and the angel of the Lord comes to him and talks to him. And he arose and went, and it, behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet. 
So Philip goes over to this Ethiopian eunuch sitting in his chariot, and he's got Isaiah the prophet, and he's sitting there reading it. And the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near, join thyself to this chariot. Uh, you ever been walking along, and you felt like the Lord's telling you to go talk to this person? That's exactly what he did here with this guy. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so openeth he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. So he used prophecies in Isaiah and showed that Ethiopian eunuch that that is about the Lord Jesus Christ in Isaiah 53. And as they went on their way, they come unto certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. So they're down there in the water, and Philip's baptizing this eunuch. They've just met, and the eunuch's probably so grateful that he's met this man named Philip that showed him the scriptures, opened them up to him, preached Jesus to him. Now he's saved. He's gotten saved, and then he'd take him down to the water and baptized him. And then it says, look at this, and when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord called away Philip. Imagine that. That eunuch, Philip, were both walking up out of the water. I'm sure the eunuch's about to have, probably ask him another question, but it says that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. And I, uh, the fact that he saw Philip leave, that probably, or be just vanished like that, that probably even confirmed in his mind even more that this was from God. So when Philip got done baptizing the eunuch, he was just vanished. He was caught away. It says in Acts 8.40, But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. So Philip was found at Azotus. So if he was found, somebody had been looking for him. He was a missing person for a little while. It seems like the Lord was giving Philip a boost so that he could get more done for him by, you know, just transporting him to, to places that he needed to be without having to travel as much. But he caught him away so he wouldn't have to spend as much time traveling. There have been times where I felt like God was giving me a boost to keep me, a, me ahead or so that I could get done something quicker. You know, one of the, in one of these days, one of these days, there will be a large group of people go missing. This will be during the rapture of the church that the Bible describes in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 Corinthians 15. A large, large group of people go missing. You say, well, I don't believe there's that many saved people. Well, imagine just, imagine just if 500,000 people went missing. That's going to be the biggest event ever. Those who will go missing are those who have put their faith on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Those who believe that Jesus died and rose again and they're putting their trust in that to save them. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to meet them in the air and take them out of the world before the tribulation comes down on Israel and the world. This is a missing persons list that you want to be on. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and resurrected. And when he was on the cross... He took upon him all the wrath of God on sin. 1 Thessalonians 1.10 says, And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. He delivered us from the wrath to come. 
Do you know that you are saved? Do you know that you will be called out of this world in this rapture that's coming? Will you be on this missing persons list? If you don't, then you need to come to Jesus Christ right now and tell him that you know you're a sinner. Tell him that you want to be saved. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come to Jesus Christ right now the best way you know how. Tell him you know you've sinned, but you know that he died on the cross for your sins, and you want him to save you.